Uh, let me adjust my, my fan. It's getting a bit hotter. <laughs> Okay, we are on live now. Sorry for letting you wait. Okay. Okay, we can start now. Thank you, everyone. Very good morning. Welcome to the reflection uh, discussion in English. So I need to give a brief <laughs> of our program first. Uh, a discussion in English uh, in which we allow people to share their experience, uh, knowledge, and expertise as far as success story. So today it is very uh, honest to have. Uh, two speaker with me right now. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I think I would like to introduce to our uh, speaker first before, uh, but I, I hope that uh, our uh, audience here already and already know that uh, today is a, is, is a very important day uh, because uh, this is a part of uh, renew, uh, uh, Clean Energy Week. So we, we run this discussion uh, focusing on the uh, coal fire power plants uh, and also uh, trying to understand uh, should Cambodia uh, continue to rely on uh, this or not. And uh, the speaker that I want to introduce to you all uh, today, uh, our first speaker is uh, uh, Ms. Ratanapich. Uh, Ratanapich currently is a, a program manager at Energy Lab Cambodia. Uh, Rotana, uh, 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 thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us. So I can just call you Rotana, right? Yeah, okay. R Rotana, uh, she graduated uh, with a, a master degree in environmental management, uh, concentration on uh, energy and sustainability transition at Kyoto University, Japan. So uh, I think uh, uh, she has a lot uh, to say in this uh, program. In which we focus on sustainability, energy transition, and so on. So I can't wait to uh, ask her questions regarding uh, this issue. Uh, our second uh, speaker uh, is joining us from Manila, if I'm not mistaken, right, uh, Rafael? Uh, Rafael is uh, with uh, WWF Cambodia. Uh, he is a sustainable energy lead. Uh, he has a long track record in, in national, regional, as well as international climate energy policy. And he also uh, play a key role in an energy strategy development uh, campaign, as well as legislative advocacy in, uh, to transition uh, developing Asia away from fossil fuel or fossil uh, uh, energy. And uh, he's with uh, WWF for 19 years. So it's quite long, right? Uh, so uh, I think he's, he's suitable uh, to be our guest speaker today, uh, focusing on uh, uh, coal power plant and why uh, we should uh, uh, focus on this and uh, moving forward with renewable energy is, is really important for us. So uh, again, thank you uh, both for taking part and, and, and thank, thank, really thank for your time uh, to be with the reflection today. And uh, I hope that uh, we're going to have a very uh, fruitful discussion on the topic. But before uh, we begin our discussion, let me uh, give a brief of introduction to our topic today. So the, the topic is on, should Cambodia continue to rely on a coal fire power plant? Uh, this is a very important topic, and uh, I know that our uh, audience out there are looking forward to, 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 to the insight given by our guest speaker. So uh, let me just give a brief of introduction first. Uh, actually, uh, a coal uh, fire power plants uh, have been known uh, and proven by uh, uh, science uh, that uh, it is one of the most polluting ways of producing energy. Uh, it it pol pollutes the air we breathe. 
and many uh, countries uh, across the world have been uh, pacing out uh, and, and turning away from uh, the source of energy. And they've been urged to abandon, uh, abandon this uh, as an uh, effort to reduce carbon emissions and prevent warming in accordance, to, uh, in accordance with the Paris Climate Agreement 2015. So all countries are emboldened to take action and, and also try to reduce their own uh, carbon footprint from energy uh, uh, production. And it doesn't include uh, its contribution to the climate uh, crisis we, uh, we currently have seen. Uh, in, it's not in, only in Cambodia, but many parts of the world. But Cambodia in particular, we continue to see even more extreme weather event, uh, drought, uh, uh, for example, as well as uh, uh, flood. Uh, it happened even uh, during, uh, for example, a like drought happened in, even during the, the rainy season. And flash flood, like I mentioned earlier, continue to damage and affects uh, uh, infrastructure, farming, as well as uh, life of the people. And uh, this is a really uh, a sad thing about the climate crisis. And uh, we know that uh, it is our obligation to take uh, action and reduce uh, carbon emission. And in Cambodia, uh, if you focus on coal power plant, uh, we have seen that uh, the countries continue to embrace coal with more projects on, on coal being implemented. The, the latest one is in uh, Udom um, the coal power plant, I think it is going to be uh, complete completed, uh, I think, this year or so. And uh, the source of power has become predominant as it now accounts for 47% uh, of the total energy source, uh, sorry, uh, total uh, electricity production in, in, in the country, according to Ministry of Mine and Energy Report uh, 2020. And this is, uh, can be really understandable uh, because uh, coal is cheaper, more stable than hydropower, uh, uh, hydropower. And the country already suffered uh, uh, some sort of electricity blackout uh, in 2019 because of the water scarcity uh, and so on. So that's why uh, embracing a coal power plant seems to be very uh, practical uh, for the government right now. But with more detrimental impacts to the climate and as, uh, as well as people health, uh, we're questioning whether we should continue to be depending on this energy source. That's why. We invite our speaker here to discuss, and, and hopefully uh, we, we learn to understand exactly how this is going to be uh, 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 our option, or we can do something better than, than focusing, than relying on coal. So uh, thank you for, for your patience and waiting for my uh, introduction. Even I tried to be brief, but it seemed to be a bit long. Uh, thank you, thank you again. And now uh, I'm, I would like to uh, start the discussion by asking you very first question because I already I already mentioned about coal power, uh, coal power stations uh, and also it affects, but I didn't go deep into that. I would like to know uh, uh, from Rafael first. Would you mind sharing with us uh, some negative impact? I should I think it should be in general. Uh, coal fire power plant has caused to the environment as well as the public health. The floor is your Rafael. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nishan, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity to uh, be part of this uh, important uh, conversation. So uh, on your question, uh, the impacts of uh, coal-fired power plants, uh, there are several. Uh, the most immediate that uh, people uh, in the communities feel uh, are the health impacts. Uh, the air and water pollution uh, that uh, is caused by coal-fired power plants cause serious diseases such as cancer, resp respiratory uh, diseases, and other illnesses such as heart diseases uh, that lead to premature deaths. Uh, highly toxic lead and mercury uh, plus uh, the particulate matter 2.5 uh, are the main culprits uh, to this uh, uh, serious uh, diseases uh, that can uh, be uh, caused by coal-fired power stations. And then acid rain, uh, the emission of sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide uh, causes uh, uh, acid rain, which is uh, harmful, uh, not only to people, but also to uh, agriculture and, and, and the general environment. 
And then uh, we all, as uh, just I mentioned, coal combustion or energy is the single largest source of uh, energy related carbon, carbon dioxide emission. Uh, just think of it, coal represents just 40% of uh, global electricity production, 40%. But it is responsible for more than 70% of the emission coming from electricity generation. Uh, you can see the discrepancy, 40% share, but it contributes 70% uh, in the emission, in the production of electricity. And we all know that carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas that causes climate change. Yes. And this I mentioned all the impacts that Cambodia and other countries are already feeling, you know, droughts, uh, floods, heat waves, yep. sea level rise, food insecurity, degradation of ecosystems, and extinction of species. So really lots of impacts. Thank you, Rafael, for, for your uh, insight on uh, what should be uh, the impacts of a, a coal power, fire power plant. We know that the, there's a lot of them, not just hell, but the environment itself, climate crisis is here. So uh, without focusing on the impacts, I think we're ignoring the, the fact that uh, the world is, is, is becoming warming, uh, a lot of problems that we're facing, not just us, but the future generation. Uh, my next question uh, would be to Rotana. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, it, it seemed to be practical uh, for the government. I think they have been uh, saying so. Uh, energy demands in Cambodia has been rising, of course, dramatically. So uh, this make it more important to, to, to choose an energy that could help them cope with the demand. Uh, the top priority is, is to ensure developments and, and also at the same time, uh, prevent the blackout. So uh, like I said, uh, they say that it, it is the most suitable option uh, to, to choose uh, comparing to the other source of energy. But to you, uh, as an energy expert, do you think that uh, this is the, the, the practical option or you think uh, differently? Uh, thank you so much, Nisai, for a very interesting question. <laughs> uh, you are, you are right, you are right that uh, the energy demand in Cambodia is growing from year to year. And I think we still remember that in 2019, we faced the um, energy crisis, right? And we had like a long um, uh, 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 like out across the countries, this kind of thing. So this is also something that the government trying to, to deal with as well. So yeah, uh, uh, the government has already uh, uh, built coal projects and some coal projects are under construction already. And the point is that it's not just only the coal projects, but the government also uh, uh, has built uh, their hydropower projects as well. So the question is like, so what's, what's about the future of options to meet the rising demand beside coal power plants, right? So uh, a lot of people, a lot of people thought that coal was cheaper compared to the other um, energy sources. But actually, um, solar is half the price of the coal power in Cambodia. I see. Right? Yeah. So if we ask, do we have other better choices? Yes, we do. We also have other choices other than coal fire power plants. We can have a reliable electricity system where solar and wind power can be reliable, can, uh, can be reliable and cheaper. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nisai. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, the future or the choice that we should focus on is uh, renewable energy, uh, sorry, uh, the clean energy like uh, solar and, and so on. So uh, as Rodna has mentioned, uh, the option has been more than just one, but there's, there's a lot of them, but uh, whether or not we're going to choose it, it depends on the choice of it. Yeah, thank you, Sir Rotana. My, my next question would be to uh, uh, Raphael again, because uh, you, you already mentioned about the, the harmful uh, impacts that uh, coal power have, has, has uh, created. 
for environment, for the people and so on. But I, I also encounter with some people uh, who are advocating for introducing uh, uh, clean coal technology. Uh, well, I haven't been uh, visiting the coal fire power plant, but I think that the newly constructed coal power plants would be equipped with that kind of uh, technology. And they think that it's going to be uh, uh, not only just reduce the uh, deadly environmental effects, but also curb the emissions. Do you think that this be really practical uh, for 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 a country, for example, like right, like Cambodia, for example, we have a very small uh, coal fire plant being constructed, but uh, this technology seems to be costly, and also uh, we cannot guarantee that it, it's 100% clean uh, in terms of reducing the effect itself and, and curbing uh, the ambition. Uh, what do you think about this technology for those who are advocating for building new power, uh, coal power, uh, fire power plant while uh, equipping with uh, uh, this technology? Um, first of all, uh, we need to define what clean coal technology means uh, because right now, uh, the so-called uh, clean coal technology uh, being uh, promoted uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, including Cambodia, yeah. only reduce the sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide emission. Uh, you know, these are yeah. the emission yeah. that causes acid rain, but does not really reduce or eliminate the main problem, yeah. which is carbon dioxide. Uh, now, uh, this... Uh, so-called clean coal technology does not address the carbon dioxide emission of coal-fired power stations. The only clean coal technology that can be called really clean uh, is the so-called uh, uh, coal-fired power plants equipped with carbon capture and storage, so-called mm -hmm. CCS. Yeah. Uh, but this uh, uh, power plants are only in their experimental phase. And the CCS technology is very expensive. Uh, it's two to three times more expensive uh, compared to com conventional coal power plants. Uh, and there are no existing carbon capture storage equipped coal plant in commercial operation mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, I see. much less in Southeast Asia. And uh, last point. Uh, CCS requires high efficiency, uh, high efficiency coal plants, the so-called ultra supercritical uh, coal uh, technology uh, that are being uh, uh, constructed in China, for example. But most coal plants in Southeast Asia use the older and, and inefficient subcritical coal plant technology, including in Cambodia, uh, you can ask around. Oh, most of the coal plants, if not all, are subcritical, and they are not uh, compatible with CCS. So aside from CCS being expensive, the coal plants in Cambodia are not suited for this technology. I see. So uh, it is also costly and it's not really practical uh, uh, to a certain extent. What about Rotana? Uh, you have any different take on this issue uh, uh, in terms of Cambodia uh, introducing this technology, if it has any, uh, to the uh, existing or the newly uh, built uh, coal fire power plant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Nisai. Um, so, Rafa mentioned um, correctly that this technology has not yet been applied to Southeast Asia yet, and it's more expensive. It's more expensive. So from the economic uh, point of view, it's not really practical. Yeah. But if we speaking of environmental impacts, uh, we, men we mentioned that clean coal, uh, clean coal technologies are a type of technology that would prevent, prevent CO2 exhaust from entering the atmosphere from power plants, right? But, um, I just want to mention that clean coal technologies do not account for the environment, environmental impacts of coal mining, mm -hmm. mm, right? Because coal mining itself also promotes several environmental problems, like including pollution, soil degradation, and also a destruction of natural habitats as well, right? 
So, um, um, I mean, like this is because they perceive that the, the construction of new coal power plants with clean and efficient technologies as environmentally friendly because it's reduced the CO2 emission from power generation. However, however, this practice will encourage more exploitation of mining of coal as well. Yeah, I mean, that's my, that's my uh, perspective for yeah. the clean coal technologies. Yeah, but in short, in short, from economic point of view, it's not really practical yet yeah. in Cambodia. Yeah. I see. So from uh, eco economically speaking, it's not practical. Uh, thank you, Ratana. Back to Raphael again. I think uh, I have a question for you because uh, you've been advocating for clean energy, moving away from, 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 from fossil fuel. Uh, the coal phase out uh, uh, movement, uh, I think it, it started in 2017 at COP23. Uh, I was there seeing a lot of uh, 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 European country uh, pledging to end coal's uh, uh, production and so on, uh, especially in, in terms of energy production. But there are a lot of people still continue to say uh, that it is really uh, unfair uh, to request developing country uh, like Cambodia and, uh, who just start to, to take benefit uh, from coal fire power plant to quit coal while many Western countries have been uh, using this for a century, if not, uh, if not more than that. And they have been enriching themselves uh, in making use of this power for economic purpose, for social development and so on. So what is your take on this statement? Uh, I, I think there's a, a, a lot of discussion around coal, but uh, this statement seems to be uh, an, uh, an, uh, an attempt to, to, to prevent the, the country from quitting this. So what is your take on this, Rafael? Um, it's true that uh, industrialized countries uh, benefited from the combustion or the burning of uh, coal and other fossil fuel like oil and natural gas. Uh, to uh, modernize, but uh, that happened uh, before uh, the climate crisis became yeah. uh, an issue globally. And uh, right now we have a we have a climate emergency yeah. on our hands, and that require all countries. Uh, to contribute in the global effort to rapidly reduce carbon dioxide emission, two thirds of which come from fossil fuel combustion for energy. Two thirds of all greenhouse gases that uh, cause climate change come from energy uh, use. And um, so my position here is, of course, rich and rich industrialized countries uh, like European countries, the US, Japan, yeah. Um, should uh, uh, and they benefited the first uh, from coal and other fossil fuel use in the past. They need to act first mm -hmm. to rapidly reduce their emission, and 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 some of them have have made some uh, bold commitments. Like for example, Germany has committed to uh, shut down all their coal-fired power stations. I think in twenty thirty-five, zero coal-fired power plants. And, and other European countries like Italy, <clears throat> Spain, I think, and the UK have made the similar co commitments. So there's movement there, uh, but they, uh, some countries still need to uh, move faster. Um, and in addition to that, uh, the richer countries, the industrialized countries should contribute uh, to uh, the developing countries in their effort in their efforts to transition away from coal and yeah. into uh, sustainable renew renewable energy like, like solar and wind. And, and the last point, and uh, there's already a global consensus that the transition to sustainable energy systems will benefit societies economically, socially, and environmentally. So there's really, uh, uh, no question about that, that uh, yeah. this is the way forward. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rafa. So this is a responsibility. Uh, we can say uh, each country have their own contribution to that. So uh, even those uh, rich country or industrialized country have take, can more, taking more benefit from that, but they need to do first. And of course, uh, the, the, the poor developing country need to follow up by doing their part. 
Thank you. So uh, the next question will, will go to uh, Ratana. I think uh, we've been speaking of moving away from coal fire power plant and, and also moving uh, towards uh, uh, integrating uh, renewable energy into our energy system. But uh, we, what we have seen is that a lot of, uh, there's, uh, uh, there is a, a painstaking move for, for some developing country. And it, it has been proving that uh, real, it is really difficult to quit coal fire power plants, not just for Cambodia, but for other third world country. So why is it so difficult to, to quit coal? Um, a lot of people talk about coal addiction uh, and so on for a country. So why is it so difficult from your point of view, Ratana? Oh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Miss Sai. This is a $1 million question. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, not, it's not easy and uh, it's really difficult, you say. Yeah. yeah. So first we need to look at the availableness of coal. Of coal. So as uh, Rafael mentioned, coal is over 40% of 40% uh, uh, electricity worldwide, right? Rafael, if I remember correctly. So the, as you mentioned, the developing countries are trying to phase out coal. So they're trying to stop uh, uh, not building coal anymore. But if you look at the uh, developing countries, like fast growing, fast growing economies, especially countries in Southeast Asia, including Cambodia, for example, we have been uh, building new coal fire power plants <laughs> more and more. And uh, uh, the point is that the biggest challenge for these countries like Cambodia is to, is to um, figure out what, uh, what to build instead of coal as well, right? So it's, it's, it's really crucial for these countries to plan on how to integrate higher shares of clean energy, first of all, because it is a new system. And uh, uh, as, as we know that the sun isn't always shining, shining and the wind is not always blowing as well. So in, so in this statements, the systems needs to be balanced with the existing coal, existing hydropower, and plus new fast acting batteries and gas and engines as well. And that also includes solar power. Yeah, I see. and then the point is that if we look at the global energy crisis right now, as I mentioned, uh, coal prices are getting higher right now. So compared to solar and wind, um, solar and, and wind power prices are cheaper. So it is more you know, it is more about uh, the energy secure because Cambodia will not need to depend on importing coal from other countries. And this is something that we need to consider. Yeah. I see. Mm. Thank you, Ratana. Uh, for Rafael, do, do, you, do you think that uh, there's any other thing that you want to add for this part? Because uh, it's not only for Cambodia in general, but for the rest of the we want to focus more on Southeast Asian regions, uh, with a coal fire power plant continue, continue to be predominant source of energy. But moving away, like I mentioned earlier, is really difficult for them. So uh, why it, it happened like this? Like Ratana already mentioned from, from different perspectives, uh, from, from a, te a technological way, from uh, economic factor and so on. So what, what about you? Do you have any different take on this? Yeah, uh, my take on this is um, the challenge is not economic or technical anymore, because uh, as we have, as Ratana and I have uh, repeatedly said, yeah, uh, solar and wind and other renewable energy are already cheaper than coal, and there are already existing technological solutions uh, to integrate. Uh, this variable renewable energy sources uh, into the power system of uh, countries. Uh, the challenge really mainly is uh, uh, political, um, meaning how decisions are made and what yeah. parameters or factors 
are considered in charting the development pathway of uh, the country's power sector. For example, in developing the, the power development plan. Um, the other thing I would like to mention is uh, existing power systems, not only in Cambodia, but uh, in most Southeast Asian countries um, and the technical capacity of uh, the people uh, in the power sector are designed uh, for conventional uh, power systems. Um, when I say conventional, you know, the traditional uh, power systems with high base load, coal and hydropower. Um, and so this is also a factor that there, there is a, a resistance for change uh, within the status quo because they're used to, you know, uh, to the system, it's easy for them. Um, there's resistance there. It, it's common, but uh, uh, it's it's being overcome by, by uh, uh, training uh, and other capacity building efforts by many organizations. And then finally, uh, the rapid expansion of coal in Cambodia and other Southeast Asian countries uh, were mainly fueled by the support with cheap public funds from China, yeah. Japan, and South Korea. Uh, that fueled the expansion of coal in Southeast Asia. But will, this will soon disappear uh, because all these countries, uh, China, Japan, South Korea, together with the G7 countries, uh, the, the group of uh, rich uh, countries, G7, have all committed uh, to stop financing coal in other countries. So the, the flow of money from China, Japan, and South Korea will stop. Uh, and we, we, we certainly hope that uh, this will prevent the construction of uh, more coal fired power station. Well, I, I think uh, I also had a question for, for that, for the, for the, I think for the last part of this conversation on the China stop funding uh, coal fired power plant uh, overseas, uh, and including, of course, Cambodia. We have seen a few of them being funded by uh, a Chinese uh, company. But I will uh, discuss more about it uh, afterward. But my, my follow-up question, you talk about uh, being resistant. Uh, there's a res uh, resistance uh, within the, uh, the, the, the leadership or the status quo that uh, is not willing to change uh, within the, uh, especially to, to, to integrate more uh, share of the other energy, especially uh, for clean energy and so on, uh, while trying to embrace only coal. So, so, so how can we overcome that resistance uh, from any practical point of view would be really helpful uh, in this context because we want to know in what way we can do it uh, to make sure that of course the encouragement uh, incentive that could uh, change all those resistance. For, to, to Rafa, yeah. Uh, to my mind, uh, the best uh, 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 reason uh, to uh, go renewables is the economic uh, reason that uh, Cambodia, including uh, the electricity consumers, will benefit from a more reliable, more sustainable, and cheaper uh, electricity. Uh, and that will actually have broader implications uh, to the Cambodian society. Uh, for example, uh, Cambodia is, uh, uh, you know, the factories of uh, the garment factories and, and, and other global brands that have operations in, in Cambodia contribute significantly to the Cambodian economy. Yeah. And most of these uh, companies have uh, commitments to go 100% renewables. Uh, some of them as early as 2025, some of them by 2030. And uh, the cost of doing business in Cambodia uh, will increasingly become uh, more costly because of the carbon pricing. Uh, there will be a price uh, for carbon and uh, that will be one of the main uh, issues that will be uh, uh, discussed and agreed uh, at COP26 in Glasgow. So uh, aside from the already expensive uh, uh, 
prices of coal uh, because of the current supply crunch in China and India. Yeah. Uh, the forthcoming uh, carbon price will, will actually uh, impact the competitiveness of countries that rely heavily on carbon intensive uh, fossil, fossil fuel like coal. I see. Thank you, Rafael, for, for this point. And then move back to Pratana again. I think there's a few of people, uh, a few uh, questions uh, being listed in our comment section on Facebook, but I pick one of them because it, it linked to what Ratana had mentioned earlier it's about the, the demand for energy and, and how solar and, and wind power plant is going to be, uh, well, expanding a role in, in, in coping with this and, and responding to the demand. So the question is uh, whether or not Cambodia has a sufficient, I'm not really sure what he really mentioned about, about sufficient space for solar and wind uh, power uh, in terms of integrating this. Maybe he wants to know the capacity in, 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 in moving forward with coal, sorry, with, uh, uh, with solar and wind power. So is there anything you want to share about this? Uh, is Cambodia really or on the right track to uh, the energy transition, for example, like wind? We haven't discussed much about it, discussed much about it because uh, we haven't seen uh, it been taking place in here, but the solar farm, I think there's increasingly uh, more common for people to know, but wind is another issue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. I. So actually, solar technology is not a new technology at, uh, anymore. It's uh, <clears throat> and actually solar farms has been built in Cambodia for several projects already as well. So this is not really new things. And solar and its solar power is growing in Cambodia as well. So as I mentioned before. Um, it's also about the diversification of energy sources, you know. So um, we should not say, oh, Cambodia should put a lot of focus on coal, or Cambodia should do that. Should it's, it's a balance. It's a balance of the energy mix as well. So in this respect, clean energy can support the energy security by adding diversity. Yeah. Diversity to an overall electricity generation portfolio, you know. So as I mentioned, we need to look at uh, many aspects as well. So when we look at the prices of coal, yeah. it's not it's not really stable. And you know, Cambodia needs to import coal from other country. And but we look at but if we look at the solar and wind, the power is already exists in the country. So, so it's, it's the local resource that we can get from solar and coal. So it's more kind of like it can be more reliable compared to coal. Yeah. And now the point is that if you look at the prices again, solar and wind are getting cheaper. It's only like around seven cents per kilowatt hour. Um, sorry, I think it's only, if I remember correctly, um, it's three cents, three cents to six cents. Um, per kilowatt hour for solar and wind. Yeah. But if you look at the coal that we imported from other countries, it's around seven cents per kilowatt hour or more than that. Yeah. yeah. I see. So this is this is the, the points that we, we should um, consider and think about. Yeah. So what about wind power? I think uh, we are we have enough potential are we having enough potential to, to move forward with wind? I think the study have been conducted, but I'm not really sure if, if it, how it has been going and uh, should we also focus on investing in wind power, for example, like wind speed, where it should be uh, those uh, windmill being constructed and so on. So I'm, I'm not really sure about this. If you have anything to share with us, Ratana, please go ahead. Uh, Rafael, you rest your hands. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Rafael. Yeah, yeah well, we're Sorry. actually uh, engaged with the wind power uh, sector. So uh, Cambodia actually has uh, wind resources. It has mm -hmm. more solar, of course, uh, because uh, it's a tropical, tropical country, but it has significant wind resources in certain areas like in, in Kampot, um, in Sihanoukville, uh, the coastal area of Cambodia, and yeah. then in Mondulkiri. Mm -hmm. um, we, 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 we know this because we are talking to several uh, wind uh, energy companies and 
some of them are in their uh, advanced stage of development, actually. Uh, for example, the wind uh, project in, in Bokor, uh, in Kampot province, that has been, uh, I think it's ready for, for implementation. They're just ready, uh, waiting for <clears throat> the final wind light uh, from, from the government. Uh, and then um, Chinese and uh, French companies, I, I believe, are developing wind projects as well in Mondolkiri. Uh, and uh, so these are the two main areas now where wind power development um, are happening already. And I think it was estimated that uh, Cambodia can easily <clears throat> install about 1,500 megawatts of wind yeah. power capacity. Yeah. yeah. I see. Thank you, Rafa, for this information. That, that really helpful because uh, we're looking forward to not having only a uh, solar farm, but also wind uh, mill and uh, that could have uh, produced more energy in this. So Ratana, do you have anything to share? I, I, I would just more? like to emphasize yeah, yes, that uh, okay, yeah. uh, the diversity of uh, diversifying, uh, Ratana mentioned this, the energy sources of Cambodia is always the best strategy um, because uh, if you rely on one energy source yeah. only, for example, coal, and it's imported, your yeah. energy security will be affected significantly. So diversification is uh, really the best strategy. Yeah. Thank you, Rafa, for you em emphasizing on this part. Ratana, uh, oh, do yes. you have anything to add on wind? Yes, yes, yes. So I think, uh, Misai, if you look at the, uh, uh, well, so basically, Cambodia is a tropical country. <laughs> we have yeah. a lot of sunshine. So um, solar power has more potential. It's, I think we can get the potential from solar power around 40, 45,000 megawatt. At the, uh, so, um, so compared to uh, wind power, I think wind power is lower than solar power. It's around 6,000 megawatt. But uh, uh, we still have potential in wind powers, and this is the potential that we need to tap on as well. So in short, we have excellent resource for clean energy, short mm -hmm. version, yeah. I see. I think we we'll need to discuss a little bit on, uh, on renewable energy, particularly on, uh, on uh, solar energy uh, after this question. But I think maybe uh, a little bit more after that, but I want to move back to coal after this uh, because we already uh, uh, know that there are some uh, uh, trying force of change and uh, the resistance in uh, the system and so on. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, last year in August, um, this is for Cambodian part, we have seen uh, the news uh, uh, movements amongst the global grants like uh, H&M and Nike and so on. They also uh, form in a group then also advocating for moving away from coal. They, they, they warn that if Cambodia didn't do so, continue to uh, rest upon the, the coal fire power plant, they will risk capital fly. They move away, for example, like to Vietnam, which uh, renewable energy have been uh, uh, developed quite significantly. And then Cambodia will need to think what strategy they, they, they should do to make sure that those global brands is not going to be moving out, uh, going to be moving out of the country. So for Rafa, uh, do you think that this is a, a very significant part uh, if you talk about the role of private sector, especially the, the, the global um, uh, commercial uh, products which has a very large role in, in, in Cambodian economic sector? So do you think that this is a, a, a very significant move, important thing that, uh, that other sectors should, should also advocate for clean power and encouraging the government to rethink of its own strategy? Um, to my view, that, that's a, a very uh, important uh, consideration uh, that uh, uh, the Cambodian government uh, uh, should make. Um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the advocacy of uh, this uh, global brands yeah. uh, for more renewable electricity uh, in the power system of Cambodia. 
Um, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, most of these uh, global brands, these multinational companies that you mentioned, yeah. are members of the renewable uh, RE100, Renewable Energy 100 yeah. Coalition. Yeah. And they have commitments as part of the Paris Agreement yeah. uh, to go 100% renewables. And uh, if uh, they're going to uh, use high carbon electricity um, in countries like Cambodia, that will reflect in their production cost because they have to account for their, uh, the carbon emission yeah. uh, from their uh, uh, production uh, uh, processes. And that will make their uh, production cost uh, higher. So uh, the comp uh, that, that, that's what I pertain to earlier as the, competitive, uh, the competitiveness impact of high carbon energy from coal. Uh, because the production cost will be more expensive. Yeah. Uh, Cambodia will become less attractive uh, to these investors because of the higher production cost. <laughs> and that will mean, you know, jobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rafa. Uh, that that really uh, a good thing that to know about their commitment and, and how it play a role in, in, in pushing forward with the renewable energy. Back to Ratana again. I think it's not only just focusing on the uh, government's policy strategy to ensure uh, energy security, but also because of Energy Lab, Cambodia has been working on the promoting this awareness, trying to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, bring forward uh, the, not just private sector, but youth, uh, people who are the backbone of the future of the country. Uh, I think understanding this is not just about them, it's about the, 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 the fate of the country moving forward, uh, whether or not uh, they, they're going to care about it or not, but the future is in their hands to think. So uh, in terms of energy transitions, in terms of moving away from coal, do you think that is there any role use and, and, and other people, that the general public can, can play yeah. to make sure that they can incentivize, I'm not saying that incentivize the government, but at <laughs> least uh, advocate uh, for the facts that we need to uh, rethink of our strategy and, and, and also, if possible, stop investing more in coal or stop further injecting investment from foreign country in coal. Okay, thank you so much, Nisai. So as the individual, like if, uh, if you're the students or if you are uh, from academic field, how, 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 how might we, how might we going to contribute um, yeah, to yeah. the energy trans transitions in Cambodia? So, First things first, the basic thing that, that we can do is to educate ourselves. Yeah. Like to be to be well informed, to be well informed and to be a uh, to be aware of what kind of development projects happen in the country. To be super honest from my own experience, and I was with a student. I didn't really know much about the development projects in my own country in, in Cambodia. Yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't even know uh, uh, how many hydro projects existed in, in Cambodia, this kind of thing. Yeah. So the first thing is, is to educate yourself because knowledge, knowledge is uh, a powerful tool, not just to not just for change, but it's also to to create discussions as well, you know. And um, speaking of knowledge, uh, it's also improve your improve our decision making skill, decision making as well. Yeah. So um, this is important. Like uh, uh, Rafael mentioned that uh, last year, I think I remember correctly. Last year, several brands like H and M and yeah. other other brands who are in the garment and footwear sector. Um, requested more clean energy shares in Cambodia as well. So, and then I think this is not just only for the individual to learn and to understand about clean energy, but this is also a role that 
private sector can play as well. So this is a good move that private sector start to play their role to promote clean energy in Cam not just only in Cambodia, but also the other parts of the world as well. So why, why, why it's important in Cambodia? Because Cambodia re depends on government and foodware industry. And food government and foodware industry is one of the largest industry in Cambodia, right? It's create a lot of jobs and it create a lot of revenues for, for Cambodia as well. So this is good things. I mean, like the government can start to think how to integrate more clean energy in our electricity system and also to create more local jobs, more local investments as well. Yeah. So I hope I answer your question. Yeah. 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 I think that I totally agree with you. With knowledge, uh, we uh, come with, uh, I think, power to decide on the, what issue that we want to address and what future we want. I yeah. see uh, there's a growing the environmental uh, awareness among people, but we need to do more in terms of uh, instilling these yeah. ideas. Yeah. Link to this question, uh, Raphael, uh, my personal assessments. And uh, I think I've been inspired by, by, by your people, young people, because I, I, I undertook some uh, program with the all climate uh, science scientists, uh, climate uh, advocate uh, in your country, very young, very energetic and very, uh, very inspiring. Because uh, uh, I, I, I was with the climate tracker in 2017 and doing some uh, training there in, in, in Manila. So I think that they, they've been ongoing with this movement and they've been advocating for, for more clean energy. They've been openly working on different projects, uh, demanding the government to, 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 to stop investing in coal fire power plant. Yeah, each country have different story, different problem to deal with, but what do you think about to have, uh, I mean, about the, about the way to have, maybe empower is, is, is a bit too strong word, but how we can have uh, young people to sing and, and to, to do their job, uh, especially in terms of uh, helping them uh, think about this much. I'm not sure what to say, but in a, a, wise, a wider uh, scale in terms of growing environmental uh, uh, awareness and concerns from science. Sorry. Yeah, uh, that, this is an important point because uh, <clears throat> the youth movement globally is already spearheading uh, the global climate movement. As yeah. you know, uh, Greta Thunberg, yeah. uh, a very uh, energetic and, and famous uh, and influential uh, advocate uh, for clean energy and the energy transition. Uh, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, actually, yeah. um, several times, I think two times already. And, you know, uh, uh, the Friday for the Future is a generally uh, youth-driven movement. And this is being replicated already in many countries, like, like, like the Philippines um, um, and, and, and many other uh, countries. So I think uh, the youth are already aware of the climate emergency uh, and they are taking uh, uh, part and making a strong contribution to convince the government to take a more sustainable path uh, in the energy system. Um, I think uh, we can further strengthen uh, this uh, uh, climate and energy, energy transition movement among the youth uh, by equipping them uh, with uh, technical knowledge uh, on the more technical part of energy, which we are doing actually uh, in, in, in uh, many countries uh, and many organizations are doing this as well, so that they become more active participants uh, in uh, the conversation happening in our countries regarding uh, the energy future that our country led by our governments are undertaking right now. So we need to be knowledgeable, yeah. to be able to actively participate in a conversation to decide a clean energy future. Yeah. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, thank you so much.
like Rotana has mentioned, I think Energy Lab has been doing uh, a lot of activity, not only uh, for the use, but supporting media uh, practitioner, because without media partaking in this, I myself still keep learning about this as well, <laughs> uh, because it, it's a bit complicated sometimes, but understanding just a general thing about coal, power plant, and renewable energy really helpful for me to do the report, but I, I really recognize that it is more complicated, and sometimes people give up because of that. But I think in, in terms of general discussion, it might not be uh, any problem, understanding the effect, like you mentioned for the first question, what happened to our life if it didn't do anything, why a coal power is, is detrimental to health, so it is easier to understand. But we need to spread the message to them to know uh, this problem are facing their life, not just uh, the other group of people, this vulnerable group, but everyone. Well, I think uh, we almost running out of time, but I think we got five minutes more to go. Uh, we haven't uh, focused on uh, uh, the, the, the stop funding. I mean, the cease funding from, from China and the other big country, uh, we already played for to go carbon neutral and also try to commit to uh, reducing carbon footprint. Uh, you, you already mentioned about uh, what China has been doing uh, in terms of pledging to, 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 to stop uh, funding coal overseas. Uh, but in Cambodia, we see some uh, project ongoing. Uh, but my, my question will be to both of you. But uh, for, first of all, uh, I just want to know, uh, is, uh, is this is going to be moving forward in a positive state uh, in a positive way, or do you think that it is just, uh, I'm not really sure what to say, but it is ambitious, but it's how practical this can be for, for a big country like China to stop doing it, despite the fact that it promised to do it uh, in a year to come. But in reality, something can be uh, different or it can change. Uh, maybe to wrap up first before I go to uh, Ratana. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say that this uh, <clears throat> trend is irreversible. This is going to happen, whatever, you know. Uh, and uh, the announcement made by China is certainly a game-changing uh, policy because China is the largest financier yeah. of power plants in Cambodia and Southeast Asia. Uh, and... Uh, together with the commitments of Japan, South Korea, I mentioned this, the rich countries, and financial institutions, huh? um, not only uh, the public financial institutions like World Bank and ADB, but also uh, private financial institutions like the Singaporean banks. Yeah. Um, all of them have made commitments to stop financing coal. So this is really... Uh, where the world is going. And it sends a powerful signal that uh, the age of coal power is fast coming to an end because of, the cli because of climate change and it's increasing uncompetitiveness against uh, modern renewables like solar and wind. And the power plants under, uh, however, the power plants under construction in PSN province and Odomenche, unfortunately, will not be affected by this uh, announcement of China yeah, yeah, because yeah. they are already being constructed <laughs> and they're about to be finished. So, yeah. But we look forward to a firmer and more immediate timeline from China yeah. in ceasing or stopping its uh, overseas coal finance so that further expansion of coal power in Southeast Asia, including Cambodia, Thanks. and the rest of the world is prevented because there are other coal plants still in the pipeline. So hopefully uh, we will be able to uh, uh, prevent them from being stopped yes. because of this Chinese announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Rotana, uh, do you have anything to add to this? Well, I, I agree with Rafael. Yeah, I think uh, everyone knows that recently China made a really surprise announcement uh, uh, at the UN gathering. So China said that um, they will not build new coal-fired uh, power plants abroad anymore. So um, this is good news. This is good news. But um, if I remember correctly, I think um, President Xi Jinping also mentioned that China will step up to support uh, for other 
uh, for for the developing countries um, to build more or, or to develop more green and low carbon energy sources as well. So this this is all good news. And as I mentioned, um, this is the important step that uh, the government is uh, uh, that China is uh, taking right now. And so it's mean like uh, they will support green energy projects abroad. So so far, if you look at the um, the clean energy investment in Cambodia, I yeah. think um, most of the solar power projects in Cambodia were built and invested by um, Chinese companies as well. Yeah. Nice. So I hope that I hope that uh, this will grow. Uh, this will grow. Uh, grow more in Cambodia as well, yeah, to, to have more clean energy investments from China. This is good news. Yeah. And my final questions uh, to Rotterdam again, uh, because uh, we are now dealing with multifaceted uh, issue uh, driven by climate change, and uh, we are advocating for more clean energy and energy transition taking shape in every uh, every part of the world, but it's, uh, some has been going faster, some have been going uh, slower, and there's some uh, the general obstacles to uh, the, uh, this energy transition. For example, like in Cambodia, we are focusing on coal-fired power plant. Do you think that we are on the right tracks to energy transition? Uh, uh, I mean, taking into account different factors, and you have been accessing and witnessing, observing uh, every movement of the energy transition in Cambodia. Uh, do, do you have anything to share with us regarding uh, your optimism about the, the energy transition? Uh, should we be happy, excited, and uh, should we be concerned about it? Well, I would say Cambodia is working on it. <laughs> Cambodia is working on it. Cambodia is working on balancing, as I mentioned, balancing and diversifying uh, the clean energy sources and also the coal fire power plant as well. Yeah. This, this side, this is not an overnight job for the government and for the stakeholder to achieve yeah. it as well. But I see that we, we all see that from the government, uh, from the government side, from the private sector side, from the individual side. We are all contributing. We are all working on it right now. So as I mentioned, like the big brands, H and M, and the government and uh, the individual now is also learning and trying to discover uh, more about clean energy. So I'm sure. I'm sure that um, in the future we will have more clean energy sources in in Cambodia. Yeah, it's, it's increasing right now. Yeah. And um, the good news is that um, China is also taking big steps to invest more uh, green energy sources in abroad as well. So um, I think it's not just only Cambodia, but it's also the world. The world is moving toward the clean energy sources right now. Yeah. Okay. And Cambodia is following up with the world. Okay. Thank you, Ratana. That, that really uh, 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 something that uh, we all want to know. And happy that uh, we are working on it and then uh, we're moving forward. Rafael, I still have one last question for you and then a big one, uh, most important ones, but to a larger scale, uh, the region, Southeast Asian regions, you've been working in, in your own uh, position and your own uh, field of expertise at advocating for renewable energy uh, in general. But I have seen, uh, like I have mentioned earlier, uh, the, uh, the energy transition is taking place uh, in almost everywhere, including in South Asian region, and the movement to, to pull forward uh, with a uh, free coal uh, fire power plant is also getting momentum. How optimistic you are when it comes to uh, and, uh, transition away from, from, from fossil fuel in Southeast Asia? Taking into account again, into uh, into account again, uh, your experience and uh, nineteen years is quite long. Are you optimistic about it, or you still have a lot of work to do? Uh, we have to be optimistic uh, because um, we cannot afford not to be. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, um, but uh, the good news is. Um, 
the economics of energy has changed significantly. About 10 years ago, solar and wind electricity are a lot more expensive yeah. than, than coal and hydropower. But now they are much, much cheaper. And, you know, um, uh, the volatility in prices and supply of coal, oil, and natural gas, and you are seeing that uh, all over the world, in Europe, in China, and in India, all of them are running out of coal, natural gas, and oil. So the prices are so high. And this will become more and more serious uh, because of climate change, because of extreme weather events that, that are affecting the supply chains of this uh, fossil fuel. And then of course, uh, the, the, the cheaper and cheaper uh, prices of solar and wind. So, and then improving technology of energy storage. So I'm very optimistic that because of <clears throat> uh, the improving economics, improving technology, and the growing recognition of most countries that humanity, the world will actually benefit uh, by transitioning away from coal towards clean and sustainable renewable energy will benefit everybody, including everyday people in the streets who need a good job, who need a good paying but sustainable job. Yeah. So I'm optimistic it will happen. Thank you, Rafael. That, that, that's something like Ratanath mentioned in Cambodia as well as in Southeast Asia like you already mentioned it's really uh, a good news to all of us and good note to all the uh, people working in renewable energy for making this happen, like Rafael mentioned earlier. Without uh, the, the lower price of the renewable energy, uh, the option for us to move away seem to be more uh, uh, adverse to, to, to make it happen. Um, again, uh, thank you. Uh, both speaker for a very insightful uh, discussion today. And I really learned a lot from this. And I hope that our uh, people out there also learn from it too. Uh, coal fire power plant and Cambodian context and uh, the region from Rafael, uh, a regional expert in this issue for 19 years and Ratana uh, who been working uh, in promoting renewable energy for the energy lab. But before I end it, I, I would like to know from, from, from Ratana because this is a clean energy week uh, and uh, I, I think that it's important that if you have any uh, important information to share with our people out there, some uh, asking if you have my uh, discussion uh, or any schedule uh, you think that people uh, can uh, participate in during this week of uh, celebrations of a clean energy week. Thank you so much, Nisai. So I will keep it short and simple because we are a bit overtyped. Mm -hmm. So Clean Energy Week is happening. Uh, it's happened since yesterday. Yes. So uh, it will happen from 21st until 28th of, of this month. So if you want to learn more about clean energy, if you want to find out more opportunities from clean energy, please join us. And you can find the schedule, the full schedule on Clean Energy Week Facebook page. So just go to Facebook and type Clean Energy Week on Facebook. You will find the full schedule. Thank you so much, Ms. Sai. Thank you, Ratana. Again, uh, thank you both our uh, guest speaker for your time. I think it's, it's one hour and almost uh, 14 minutes now. So uh, that's a, a great uh, pleasure and, and, and honor for me to be moderating today's discussion. And I think we, we still have a lot more to discuss with you all. Uh, and I hope that I will be able to moderate uh, the uh, upcoming session with you both as our guest speaker again. Thank you so much and, and, and please be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, bye.